Underground. A basement? No, a street. <laughs> so silly. Hey, babe. Yeah? Dana Steingold just texted me. Oh, love her. She said she wants to do my Broadway memory. Love that. And she wants to do it with Leslie Kritzer. Love her. But I emailed Leslie and she didn't respond, so. You emailed her? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Babe, that is not how you get in contact with Leslie Kritzer anymore. It's not? No, did you not get that Broadway briefing? Here, let me show you. Leslie. Leslie. Leslie! <laughs> Leslie Uggams? No, Miss Uggams, we'll call you in June. I don't know. Why don't you try it? Okay, um... Leslie? Leslie? Leslie! Who are you? Hey, Mason! No, not you, Leslie and Warren. Get back in your own little corner. God. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. You know what we need to do. Critzer. 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 Well, we got her. Broadway, Broadway, in all of its glory. We all have a memory. We all have a story. Was there an understudy? Or did the show stop? Boy. Did you see Barbara before she shot to the top? Cool. Join us as we revel in our reverie. It's my Broadway memory. Jazz. Well, hi. Oh, hello. Hi. I'm I'm Michael Kushner. Welcome to my Broadway memory. And I am Remy Germanario. And happy. I said my name wrong. It's Ario, and yeah. I said Aria. That's so weird. Hey, I'm Remy Germanario, and Hi. happy New Year. Um, we hope everyone had a lovely holiday season. Yeah, I personally had a great Hanukkah, though I'm the kind of Jew that only remembers to light the menorah three out of the eight nights. So. Yes, I can attest to that. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, it's a new year, new Congress soon, new president. Woo! Thank God, yes. And hopefully one step closer to getting Broadway back. And look, you know, we know yesterday was a really horrible, horrible day in American history. Rioters and domestic terrorists, terrorists storming our Capitol building is is a disgrace and should never have happened. Today is a weird day. We're still dealing with the aftermath of that. It's, it's just a wild time. But I just want to thank everyone who's joining us right now um, to have a little bit of joy uh, in, in your day. Take a small break from that just to um, experience the joy of Broadway, the joy of our two amazing guests. And um, thank you so much for being here today, despite all of the wackiness that's going on right now. Yes, um, it's that's totally true. And Remy and I are wishing you uh, the happiest of New Year's. It's 2021, and we can't wait to bring you more episodes and more joy, more laughter this year. Yeah, so I can already tell in the comments that we have some new hi! viewers today. Oh, hi, new viewers. It's so nice to see you all. Uh, thank you for joining us. For those of you who are just joining us, what is my Broadway memory? So mm -hmm. my Broadway memory is a bi-weekly show uh, uh, produced by the amazing Broadway Podcast Network. Its focus is on keeping Broadway alive during this time. Uh, each week, our guests will join us for some lively conversation, games, special segments, performances, and pick a playbill or a piece of memorabilia from their collection and talk about their memories associated with the show. And it opens up to incredible, unheard stories. Yes. And for those of you who are not following us already to stay updated on news and future guests, please follow us on social media. So our Instagram and Facebook, we are my at my Broadway memory. And on Twitter, we are at my B way memory. Yes. And we're, you know, we're, we're, um, we're reading the comments and, um, for, well, if you follow us, you can find out ways that you could be on the show. But, you know, we're reading the comments. People are commenting from everywhere. It's amazing. Please keep commenting. Comment Antarctica. Antarctica. Can we get some, maybe one day? That's a goal. But um, but people are commenting from everywhere in the world. So please uh, keep commenting. Let us know you're watching. Ask questions. We'll do our best to get them answered. We have a very tight show here, but we'll do our best. And uh, we did see in the comments that, you know, people were talking about Mean Girls and um, it is, that is sad, but hopefully the show will continue. Hopefully the show yeah. will continue touring. 
uh, around the world. Um, and there's always the cast album. Yeah. And you know the cast will continue on to do amazing things. So Mean Girls lives on in our hearts. And we're going to continue to celebrate Broadway. Absolutely. My Broadway memories. So yes, not only do we want to keep Broadway memories alive until theater returns, but we want you to as well. Yeah, so we want to hear from you, the viewers, about some of your favorite Broadway memories and how you're keeping Broadway alive during this time. So pull a playbill from your collection and record a one-minute video discussing your memory and email it to us at mybroadwaymemory at gmail.com for a chance to be featured on the show. So let's hear from uh, some people we really love uh, for our weekly segment, Your Broadway Memory. favorite Broadway memory is when I went to go see House of Blue Leaves with um, my parents and it was starring Ben Stiller and Edie Falco and we were sitting in like the fifth row orchestra. In the row in front of us was Jerry Stiller who is Ben Stiller's father and we were especially excited to see him because he has a very special meaning to our family, which is that my grandfather, my dad's dad, um, he w wrote plays with him in college. And my grandpa always told me stories about writing with Jerry Stiller. And during intermission, I thought it would be a great idea to go say hi to him and tell him that I am Jack Lavin's granddaughter and he, before he could say anything somebody interrupted us and said that he had to get up and go backstage so he never said anything to me and I was really embarrassed and I was so worried and then we go and we we watch the second act and all of a sudden the show ends the lights go up and you hear where's Jack Lavin's granddaughter and it was Jerry Stiller trying to find me and I went up to him and he literally held my hand and talked to me about my grandpa for a few minutes while holding my hand the entire time and he was so nice and it was really heartwarming and really amazing and such a great memory. My favorite Broadway memory, it's a simple one but it was actually a life changer. Um, I sat down with my two best friends in the whole world to see the band's visit on Broadway and I will never forget it because it was the first time I had seen um, my people represented on stage in human form. Uh, I come from an interfaith, interrace household. My mother is Jewish, Israeli, Austrian, and my father is Lebanese. And um, not only had I never seen these people on stage before, but both uh, of these nationalities, heritages, and cultures represented so accurately and beautifully on stage is a moment that my inner child uh, and adult will never forget. It was the moment I realized I had a space in this industry. I had something to say, um, that I was accepted, that I could stand firmly as who I really was. And it was a truly life altering moment for me. And it's one that I will absolutely never forget. Oh, thank you so much to Lindsay and Sarah for submitting videos. We love that. Um, I really just like, I love hearing the stories of everyone. It's really, really <laughs> cool. And I think it just unites us all together. Yes. Remember, if you want to be on our show, the same show with your favorite Broadway stars, email us at mybroadwaymemory at gmail.com with your recorded video and we'll put it on the show. All right. <laughs> I think it's time to bring on our guest. Yes. So our first guest is the lovely and talented Dana Steingold. So Dana originated the role of Girl Scout in Beetlejuice on Broadway, heard of it, mm -hmm. where she also covered the role of Lydia. Uh, other Broadway, off-Broadway, and national tour credits include the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, Avenue Q, The Visit, Saturday Night, Anyone Can Whistle at City Center Encores, not to mention numerous regional theaters all across the country. And she uh, she is on Nickelodeon's Welcome to the Wayne. Our second guest is Les 
Leslie Kritzer. She is a Lucille Lortel Award winner and has several Drama Desk, Drama League, and Outer Critics Circle nominations to her name. Broadway credits include Beetlejuice, Something Rotten, Elf, Sondheim on Sondheim, Legally Blonde, A Catered Affair, and Hairspray. Off-Broadway credits include The Robber Bridegroom, Gigantic Rooms, A Rock Romance, The Memory Show, Nobody Loves You, and The Great American Trailer Park Musical. TV credits include Difficult People, Kevin Can Wait, Younger, Vinyl Law & Order, SVU, and her solo shows include Burn It to the Ground and Beautiful Disaster. Uh, all right, and make some noise in the comments for Dana Woo! Steingold and Leslie Kritzer. Yeah. Hi, Thank you. Hi. We oh are my gosh, so we're so excited. Oh my God, how is your day? How is your new year? What's going on? Well, <laughs> the day, I know. Is, oh, well, true. I, when you, I was like, well, true. Well, it's dark. Yeah. Um, dark. You know, so much coffee. Been, yeah, it's <laughs> been, I think, a really difficult couple days for everybody, yeah. but I mm -hmm. think this is like a nice light and a nice relief for all of yes. us. And it's yes. great to see your faces. I know. Yes. So I, I, I'm, I, it's so great to talk ahead. to people. No, it's just great to talk to people and, and like people that we love. And Dana, I haven't seen like in months. So it's so nice to see you. It's, it's such nice a nice little this. Beetlejuice reunion. I know we got some Beetlejuice fans in the chat yes. tonight. Yes. So yes. I'm sure they're happy to see you all reunited. We're being called queens, Dana. We are queens. Well, you are queen. Queen. Yes, queen. <laughs> Expect your crown and scepter in the mail uh, soon. Well, you, you are queens. We both saw the show together, of course, Good. after um, I photographed Leslie for the dressing room uh, project and took amazing photos of you. Amazing. Uh, love the the I show, love but. But then we saw the show and we absolutely loved it. Um, it's uh, I loved it. We played so the fun. cast album often in our yeah. household, and it's it was just such a great, such a great show, and we miss it terribly. Mm -hmm. And um, you're amazing. You are queens. That's that's Aww. it's true. Thanks, guys. It's true. Thanks. And we to the viewers, <laughs> and to the viewers, just so you know, in re in reference to our opening number, we Leslie did respond to us. Okay, yes. she did. She did answer our emails. It was all for the bit, all for the joke. The She's bit. very prompt so and on top funny. of things. It it's was for so the bit. funny. It was it a bit. full bit. And but I have been known to not answer some emails, but that's okay. <laughs> but you know what? Well, not in this late. case. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's easy to get distracted. It's fine. Right. It's not, fine. Not in the pandemic that much anymore. Like you can say, like in the pandemic. Like I'm depressed. I don't want to talk to anybody. Or you're like, and people are like, you have nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like it's literally like I'm waiting. Like if my phone buzzes, and I'm like, oh, an email. Like yeah. <laughs> nothing going on. You respond yeah. so fast to Instagrams, and everyone's like, are you like that's so are you sad okay? that you so fast. I know. <laughs> but before before we get into Broadway memories, we have some fan questions for you. Oh, yes, yes. So uh, this one is actually for both of you. Uh, at We're Still Here podcast says, what was the most taxing part of Beetlejuice for you both, whether it was physically, vocally, or mentally? Can't wait for this episode. Well, we're here. So <laughs> yeah, I hope you're enjoying. Okay, Dana, you go first. Oh, gosh. The most taxing part, I think, um, for me was probably screaming. Um, but that, <laughs> but well. that became sort of second nature too. Um, and I don't know, honestly, like every show you find the muscles, it takes like two or three months, I think, to sort of find your way. And then it sort of just happens. It's like riding a bike in a weird way. So mm -hmm. it it's not that it's not hard, but your muscles know what to do and can kind of take over and it doesn't become a super hard thing. Like Leslie had a bigger job to do. I had a lot of snack time. <laughs> Girl, Let's be real, cookies. Dana. I had a lot of snack time as well. I know. With you. I know. In, in all room. the snacks, all the good snacks were in Dana. And um, why am I forgetting our friend's name right now? Jill. <laughs> Dana and Jill. Who, that we always went there with the food. We brought food there and we ate all of the food there. But anyway, that's what yeah. was your what was your go to backstage snack yeah. at Beetlejuice? Oh, Dana. Come oh, on. okay. So number one, I have a candy drawer in my room at like all times. It was it was actually a gift from somebody, yeah. a friend, and it was color coordinated. It was gorgeous. But when we went Whoa. to the candy, we were like, no more. But for us, it's salt. We are really big into chips and French fries. Yeah. And every Thursday, um, we would order tater tots That's or nice. French fries, and we'd have them delivered. I would order them at the top of show. They would yep. be delivered during 
uh, the whole being dead thing part two, I would yep. sing a high C, I would pick my tater tots up and I would run upstairs to put on my next costume. There That's was amazing. A Yes. Black, black, uh, uh, black, and what is it? The black pepper, salt and black pepper, uh, uh potato chips. Oh, we always had oh, those. Yeah. Then we got sick of them. We ate them for what six months straight, and then we're like, yeah. maybe we need to retire this. Yeah, yeah. Then we had we had a pretzel obsession, and then um, the hummus, the hummus from Westerly, the cinnamon hum hummus. Oh yeah. Had. Oh, oh, that special snickerdoodle hummus. The snicker dip the pretzels mm -hmm. in it. Really important oh. question: Where were the French fries from that you got yeah. delivered? Oh, we like stickies, and we mm -hmm. also like oh, yeah. the tater tots from, oh gosh, Melt Shop. Melt um, Shop. Yeah. Stickies mm -hmm. is great. Um, we just started Whole30, so our favorite snack <laughs> is cashews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yep. sorry. <laughs> Love egg cashews. Whites. Eggs. Egg whites, nailing it. Just egg whites, just mm, with a little salt. Just a little salt. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make I, a bowl. You go. Well, go ahead. No, you go. No, I was going to say, like, in regards to French fries, like, I will make a bold statement and say, I think that Checkers has the oh. best French fries. Yes. Oh. Where's Checkers? Up by us. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's it's more of like a out of New York kind of thing, like a drive through sort of situation. Yeah, Checkers, drive through, yes. But okay. they have the ones in New York. The second you get a chance, do it. Yeah. You know what? I feel that way about Arby's curly fries. I don't know if anyone mm, has those. American roast beef. Yes, sir. <laughs> Horsey sauce. <laughs> Does it really? Horsey. Yeah. Why did they name it horsey sauce though? It's or, like I don't know. Doesn't make it's any sense. Horsey sauce? Isn't it called horsey sauce? Am I wrong? Someone put it in the comments. Children, you find it. Horsey sauce. Horsey sauce. Is it horsey? Sauce. Is it? I don't know. Um, just so to answer that person's question, yes. my hardest part of the show were the Pratt Falls. Hands down, still have yeah. an injury. I have a little recurring injury to want from from repeated falling, falling. Uh, it was so worth it though. Every second, I'd, I'd go back to it in minutes if I could. Uh, oh yeah, it, it, that. But that definitely was. And I will just tell, uh, just say a little story about Dana Steingold. Dana, do you remember Out of Town? And I, correct me if I'm wrong. In D.C., when Dana, um, in Dana, when she does the Girl Scout, had multiple s screams that she needs to do at the end, right, of her number when, you know, Lydia scares her or whatever. So she thought at first, correct me if I'm wrong, that she'd do them live. At first she's like, I can do them live. I can do them live. And Dana's scream is like probably like award-winning scream. Like it's just- I remember like, it. She could make I so much money just off that scream. But at first you were doing them live. Every I did them live for night. a really long time. It's now in the show now, I only do two live right. because they record the time. And the rest that are like, while well, I'm running around are just pre-recorded. But yes, I did do them all live yes. through most of DC. Yes. And there were more because there used to be crossovers for scene changes. So like I used to run across and the clones chased me and then the clones came back and they were just like, had the empty cookie box and my backpack. And then I think somebody from Warner Brothers got upset because you couldn't kill the Girl Scout which we thought was kind of macabre and funny, but apparently other people didn't. Also, I don't really think she died. I just think she like went to the netherworld or like got scared and they like robbed her, but whatever. Up for um, so debate. That's up for debate. Um, we can talk to the writers about it. But um, yeah, so that got changed. But I was initially doing like 11 or 12 live like every night in DC. <laughs> Do you like crazy. find like a do you find like a, a was, good like healthy placement in your like nasal register somewhere to do that in a healthy way? Yeah, I kind of like started doing it. I learned how to do it in voiceover stuff, I think. And then I just sort of think of it, I think like over my chords. Like I don't even think it it's almost like you would be going for a super high note, it's but easy I just think for like, her. I don't it's think it's easy, easy but... for you. You're like, ooh. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Leslie Kritzer's audition for Screamer. <laughs> and, then, and then every night we'd be like, let's go to the bar and have drinks and um, whatever we'd have. Shout yeah. it. And the <laughs> French fries did not get in the way either. No, well, no. The French fries and the chips, they like, they coat it all. So the no, more you're sticking, the better the oil is, honestly. We every love time. that. You heard oh, it here first, kids. Eat those yeah. French fries. Pro tip. French fries. French fries equal yeah. filter. <laughs> French fries equals high mix. High right. mix. <laughs> I'm in. It'll keep you nice and lubricated. 
But yeah, I would say everybody, especially on our floor, everyone was a big snacker. Nobody was like, I don't eat this before the show. No, Nobody oh, was like that. No. Love that. It sounds like a fun <laughs> backstage. I, I, know. I would love to be. What do you guys have to eat here? Like that was always saying. Dan Heiser would come in. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. Like, oh, you got some snacks? Sophia, she'd be like, you guys have any snacks? Like everyone's coming up because they always knew we ate on our floor. <laughs> and Dana was the snack room. Dana's room was the snack room. It we really love the snack room. So crazy. this next question is for Leslie, okay? okay. So uh, Lana Perkovich. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a good transition because we already talked about a pratfall. Now, Alana Perkovich Smith asked, when you had to bend and snap eight times a week and legally blonde, did you alternate sides each performance or only as needed? Um, I guess you have to check the bootlegs, the various bootlegs <laughs> online. I, I really don't know. It's been like over 10, 12 years. I think I, oh, whatever the choreography was, I always did whatever, the same thing every night. So I think I did one over here and then I did one on the other side and then whatever everyone else was doing, we did. So I didn't really interchange legs. I think it just, I think I did the same thing every night. Yeah. So you're saying you were a good actor and wow. were consistent and obeyed <laughs> choreography. No, I'm saying I went on no. autopilot and did exactly nothing. <laughs> I did. Blacked out every night. Obey, no. I see, like everyone Obey was the wrong word. No, 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 no. No, that's, no, it's actually consistency and obey. I mean, yeah, so you always got to like stay in line, but. Most people that work with me know that I always change. <laughs> I always change stuff. I always change things around. So there probably was a night where I was like, mm -mm -mm, and I probably went like this and then did it something weird. And you I've know. seen the bootlegs. I've what? heard the notes. I said, I've seen the bootlegs. I've seen, I've heard the notes. They were good. They were yes. different and they were always. Oh yes. The riffs, the different, you know, that's <laughs> been circulating now. This, the, these out of town performances in San Francisco of Legally Blonde where I, Got, I did alternate riffs and also things got cut that were added. And, you know, in the pandemic, I have I have said, you know what? Watch all the bootlegs you want. <laughs> watch watch them all. Leslie, Enjoy. Did you, see, did you see that Let's Hear It for the Choice post of a production of Legally Blonde on like a new show or something? Oh. And the woman who sings, it's a gift for me to L carries over singing into L's. Um, uh, no. She's just belting. I have to send it to you. Very fun. <laughs> Oh my God, you got to send it. I wish we could First share all, screen it. Also, I, I need, I think we might need to talk about for a second, the OG viral musical theater YouTube video, which is, uh, which is um, the Legally Blonde video. The, the, you know, the- Oh, Courtney, take your Courtney, break. take your break. <laughs> Or the, um, oh. oh, wait, wait, wait. Which one is this? There's so there's the one compilation. Ryan Bloomquist. Oh, Courtney. It. Oh, yeah. Courtney, take your yeah. break. Courtney, take your break. Yes, That's they true. kept they they cut and paste all the people. <laughs> the most iconic performances of it, yes, Courtney. But take how your about break. the children's version of Legally Blonde? <laughs> yes, that when she's. I'm sorry. To, I I don't mean to. And I'm not trying to be mean. But that girl was so flat. She was like, "It's good for me to remember or something." <laughs> It was really so terrible. It was. She so just needs some French fries. She just needs some French fries. Just I like two minutes. Just my, a little. My favorite one of those ones was this girl who just like was clearly told by her voice teacher to keep an open sound, just like open yep, soft palate. <laughs> And so she just goes, is it in my best night tell? It's a gift from my top. <laughs> just no consonants, just vowel. Just That's the... Remy, that's like an obey. That is a student who's like, okay, I'm gonna open up the thing. I'm gonna open, I'm gonna open it up. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> At least she got the note out. She got the note out, and that's what matters. It's she good. committed. We she committed. She committed. Thank you for everyone that asked a question. Yes, we wish we could have shared fun. all of them. I know. Uh, so next up, we're going to take a small little break from our fabulous gals here uh, for our very special regular segment of ours, Divas Do Weather. Yeah, because the weather app is uh, never, ever correct, we decided to ask our favorite Broadway divas every week to tell us the weather instead. So far in past episodes, we yes. have Bernadette Peters, and last week we had Barbara Streisand. I don't know how we got wow. out, but we actually did. And, and this week we have an absolute idol of mine. I have a tattoo of her on my, far, my forearm, and she lives forever in my heart. She's everyone's favorite nanny. We have Dame Julie Andrews. Crazy. Yeah. How's the weather, Julie? Stop it. Come out tomorrow. Well, hello, my 
Michael Remy. I have confidence in sunshine. I have confidence in rain. I have confidence that rain drops on roses and whiskers on kittens. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Oh. <laughs> oh, goodbye, Julie Andrews. Don't stay away too long. <laughs> I was like, Christina? <laughs> I literally thought Julie Andrews was going to be coming. I was like, you guys are, wow, Wait. you got Julie Andrews. Can I just say that, first of all, Alan, my producer, uh, our producer of, of Broadway Podcast Network, hooked me up with the best the best gig in the world, and that was photographing Julie Andrews. And she oh. is everything. She is everything that you want her to be. And uh, and more. She when she saw my tattoo, Show I everyone. I well, I can't really roll it up. Oh. But um, when she saw my tattoo, uh, she grabbed my arm and threw it on her bosom, and did her like, oh, this is just. Have you seen a oh like her jewelry thing? But like was so amazing. She is exactly how you oh want her to be. It was absolutely That's amazing. Yeah, and she's the reason why I do. She's the reason why I do theater. I mean, like, learn stage right from stage left, standing in front of the Mary Poppins VHS. Like, she's it. What were you I, say, also, I love Christina Bianco. We did musical the musical together off yeah. Broadway. We um we it's so funny when I did when I did uh that show with her we both played Liza at different times and we both played Gaga at different times opposite <laughs> each other. Oh, it was like the most fun. She's the best and so talented the best i just wanted to give her a little amazing shout. christina bianco yeah, so is amazing. Love her. And we, love her. we can't wait to see what future diva she brings to our weather report next i just year. love her i love her so much yeah she is she's like she's she's really amazing and um she's you know uh, uh she's another artist that is keeping broadway alive with posting her impressions and her yes. videos and stuff like that i mean it's her celine dion is unparalleled it is i used to watch her do that every night and i was like how how but she goes, it, it was unbelievable. She's amazing. Yes. It, it, it re she really is amazing. And I think, um, I think we got in touch with Celine Dion. So she might be coming on next week. Oh, wow. Oh. She's my favorite. She's my favorite. <laughs> we don't know, but she might be coming on next week. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So friends who are watching, if you're just joining us, we've got Leslie Kritzer and Dana Steingold in the house. Yes! And Ooh. also, if you're just joining us, please go and follow us on social media, on please. Instagram and Facebook. We are at My Broadway <laughs> Memory. And on Twitter, we are at My B-Way Memory. We promise we won't spam you. Please follow <laughs> us. We're, we're, we're fun. And you can always reach out to us. We respond. Unlike Leslie does with emails, oh. we respond. <laughs> And I'm just, we're kidding, we're kidding, we're kidding. But uh, I love you. Now, now I love you. Now, like, <laughs> Dana, it's now time for our go to activity. Uh, we're going to each have you share a Broadway memory. And whether you can have a playbill, you don't have to have a playbill. You could just pull one out from your brain. Whatever it is, we want you to share it with us. So we're going to start. Yes, I'll do one as an example. I picked one in advance. I did not pick one at random. I thought this would be a fun one. So I chose, it doesn't say playbill, it says showbill, which I never understand why sometimes they do that Aww. and not not playbill of Aladdin, Aladdin. Uh, at the new Amsterdam theater. Um, first of all, I mean, amazing show. So fun, so great. Still don't know how that carpet flies. It's incredible. But I picked this for the memory associated with it because this was actually me and Michael's second date um, that we went on. And on the first date, I was an hour and a half late uh, the week before, yes, which is crazy. I was running late from work and he was very thoughtful and, and didn't leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a free wine. The, the maitre d' was like, do you, you, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, he's gonna be late. And he's like, sure. And just <laughs> like, <laughs> sure he is. Sure. He did arrive. And then the ne a few days after our first date, I posted on Facebook that I needed help um, moving apartments because I was like broke at the time and I didn't have money to hire movers. And Michael was the one of the people that offered to do it. And I really needed someone. And I was like, oh God, I probably shouldn't ask someone who I've been on one date with to help move with me if he offered, but he <gasps> offered. And so he did. 
Um, so we, our joke is that the only reason we're still dating is because I'm paying him back for uh, helping me move uh, <laughs> seven years ago. Uh, but at that, in the middle of the moving, he got a text that he got comps to Aladdin in the box seats. And he was like, do you want to come? And I was exhausted, but I was like, yeah, you go, you know, when you get comps to Aladdin, you've never seen it, you go. Um, and so we sat in the box. Um, mm. Some lowlights of the night is that someone had a, a seizure at the end of act one in the audience, which was terrifying. Uh, that almost like had to, it was a mess. But the high wild. point was that's where we had our first kiss. Oh. He gave me a little Mwah. Yes. And that, to the ball added. Exactly. <laughs> and now we're part of each other's worlds. Yes. No, that was the wrong music. Aladdin. A whole new world. I was thinking world. He's dating someone that has been Jafar for 14 years of his life for Halloween, and he quotes the wrong Disney movie. I'm done. Everyone in the comments, please drag me for that mistake. Drag I him. give you. <laughs> Is from that the-, the Little Mermaid? I don't remember. Yeah. That that part of your world? world? Okay. Had, had this memory been about the Little Mermaid where we had our first kiss, that would have been a solid joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's. That's how it goes, friends. That's it. That's what I we wanted. I love that. I love so, that. Dana, you want to go first? Sure. Oh, my gosh. So I don't have any playbills with me. And I had two, and I couldn't decide. But they were both kind of – they're both quick. And so I thought, this is great because they're very juxtaposed. So my first was seeing title of show. Um, I had just found out that God's Hell was canceled, that I was supposed to do in 2007, the revival. Oh. And I thought it was going to make my Broadway debut. And it all fell apart. And I went to see the show, which I probably shouldn't have done, but I thought going to see theater is so healing. Like I'm the kind of person who, Leslie is too, when I hear like the orchestra starts and I cry, no matter what show, I lose it, love it. So I was like, this will be very healing for me. But nobody told me that Heidi Blickenstaff sang a song called The Way Back to When, which the subtext for me is basically like, I wish I could go back to theater camp. And I had a very public, therapy session during that song and I wept to the point where like the people next to me were like what is wrong with her and they were like <laughs> further and further away from me um but I will always feel like very healed I felt that was my cry over the whole experience and so I felt very healed by Heidi Blickenstaff that's my dog I apologize um that song is just such like a a, a theater kid's medley it like hits home oh. for anyone who, who knows what that song is about oh my god oh so good and I loved that show. And like on um, my, my positive, positive note was that I was obsessed with Ruby Modern Millie in college. I saw it eight times. This is a real story. And I, I loved everything about it. Like what was not to love? You had Gavin Creel like crooning at you. Sutton Foster was like coming onto the scene but had really done a bajillion things before that but was just so amazing. You had like Ann Nathan doing a tap dance. It was amazing. And on my eighth time, which is also my lucky number, I finished the show and I was going down the escalator of the Marriott Marquis and I got a call that I got my first professional job leaving that show, the eighth time. And to really pull a full circle, it was 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee and Leslie's husband was the musical director. <laughs> so there you oh, go. Hey. <laughs> really full circle. And that's how you met him. And that's where I met Vadim. It is yeah. a small oh. little world, isn't it? Yeah. I love that. And I think a- I originally met you through Vadim. I think we met and then I don't know what happened, but remember I came to the store you were working at or I met you somehow. And then I came to the store you were working at on the Upper West yes. Side. Mm-hmm. And I, you're like, yeah, you should come to this store. And I, I was like, yeah, you and, yeah and, I, and I came and I bought a jacket and I remember that jacket. I don't know what happened to it, but I love it. <laughs> Who knows? Dana's Who knows? very stylish and <laughs> we like to buy what Dana buys. So. That, that was another thing in the show. We were like, Dana, where'd you get that? I'm getting it. Where'd you get those? Boots? I'm getting it. <laughs> the, two of you are adorable. the two of you are adorable, but I mean, I saw comments. Uh, we're not the only ones that agree. We saw comments about both of your styles. It, uh, or I mean, like this leopard combination we're obsessed with. I don't know. I, I'm so, I have so much leopard. I have, I do, I really, oh, thank you, Paige. Oh, Paige. Paige, that's very sweet. I hope you're. Of age. Um, (laughs) (laughs) If it's appropriate. Um, I'm joking. Paige, I love whatever little, is that a Care Bear? It's so cute. Oh, you're in the UK. 
All right. They're I'm saying sure. we have some, some UK people who are staying up late for you. you. Oh my Somebody God. Australia. Yeah. And we're sending you love in the UK. I know you guys yeah. are on lockdown also. So yeah. we are sending you a lot of love. The UK yes. loves Dana and Leslie. Love you, Paige. Yes, yes, love yes. You guys. Beetlejuice is very international. If there's one thing I've learned during this pandemic, it is how international the Beetlejuice fandom is, which yeah. is very cool. And they should I go. Mean, we should go to London for sure. Oh my God, Leslie just said my name. Oh, I love it. Paige, Paige. <laughs> and she just sang it now, Paige. I, okay. I'm, I mean, that's the thing is that's that's what's amazing about Beetlejuice and uh, you know in my age and there's still plenty of, of people that feel this way. But I had Wicked. I mean, like what I what I my ritual was I would literally wake up at six thirty in the morning to go to school. But before I would go on the Wicked fan board, I was a part of. I was I fly with Elfie. That was my screen name. Sixth uh -uh. grade, seventh grade. Gotta go. And we would get on AIM, talk with our trading buddies, and we would AIM on, on AIM, AIM trade bootlegs of different dates of Wicked, and they would transfer while we were at school. And I would come home, and I would have a new bootleg of Wicked to watch. That was middle school for me. So I get the fandom, and it connects people. It's there. Yeah. There's one person, popular Galinda, on the Wicked board, who is Lee Slobotkin, who wound up going to play Bach on tour and then do Book of Mormon on Broadway. So it's- Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's, I mean, you know, the fandom is real. It really does create a, uh, as long as everyone's respectful and everyone yeah. is, you know, uh, patient, um, the fandom can be a really cool, um, connection and networking opportunity you know what i'm saying oh my, oh my god, god it's so fun and n the opportunities for fans to connect now i mean think about it when we were growing up it's like uh, we never had the, this thing you know you would meet people on the line while you're waiting for tickets or you know rush or like you couldn't meet people like on instagram and all this stuff or live yeah. stuff like this people connect i mean it's it's incredible and our fan base is the best i have never been in a show legally blonde was like a lot a lot of fans but this is this is way beyond i mean it, yeah. i mean and it's kind and, of next level and so and dana they told us that uh, all the artwork that they sent to the theater, by the way, all the stuff that was posted on the walls of people watched um, the, the vlog thing that I did uh, where we showed yeah, a lot of artwork, they um, cataloged all of it. It's all cataloged, all put away. It has, was not thrown away so that if wow. possibly Beetlejuice has a life again, it all of that was saved, which I yeah. think is awesome. And a testament to how much we care about our fans. Yeah. I mean, show. the amount of people we saw at the Seizure who would come in full cosplay and there were like seven or eight of them in a group costume and we'd be like, oh my gosh, you all planned this? And they would say, we met on the internet and this is where we physically met. Like we made a plan to come to the show and do oh, this together. Wow. And I just thought that's so special because it just proves you just need like one person to really like get you. Yeah. And even if they're not physically with you, which I think this pandemic has kind of like shined a light on a little bit, just like having that connection, someone who understands you can really like change your world. And it seems so silly because it's Beetlejuice, right? But I don't know, it's like really special. And I think that's what I miss about theater is like that connection. Yeah. Um, Dana, we have we had a question for you that I want to get answered, but you know, to just piggyback on that, Leslie, you did a show that had that for me, like um, in 07, you know, I went to Frenchwoods and we were all obsessed with Legally Blonde. And during that time there was, um, there was Broadway on Broadway and, you know, in Times Square. And we would use That's that. Right. We would use that uh, every, every kid that didn't live in New York, we would use that as a reunion fly in September to New York, sleep over our friends places, go to Broadway and Broadway and see shows. And we all did that. We all had a reunion at Legally Blonde, which I oh saw twice in, with camp friends. It's that, that's what it is. It's an amazing it's amazing. So Dana, the question that we got from Dana was uh, from Zoe Kovarik. What was Dana's Broadway debut? I'm so curious. Haha, ha, and such a huge fan. Oh, thank you. It was Beetlejuice. Which hey! I know. Everyone's surprised. Everyone's surprised. Everyone's surprised every time. But, you know, it's just a testament to, like, how the right thing 
if you really do wait it out and work hard and just do the pieces you want to do and work with good people, the right thing will happen for you. And if I had wrapped all of my wishes in a box and like buried it when I was a kid, like originated Broadway role, have my own song on a soundtrack, get to perform at the Tonys, do the Thanksgiving Day Parade, like arguably the coolest part of the whole thing. Um, like I would have opened the box and everything came true with Beetlejuice and I got to do it with like the best people in the world. So honestly, like all of the hardships and all the stuff that, and I'm not the only one who has had this happen, like show canceled, old things that are like almost that you think is gonna be the thing. Um, it's just a testament to like, if you keep redefining what success is for yourself, you can like push through anything and you'll end up in the right situation. And the universe is just this abundant well of opportunities. You know, sometimes as actors, we get like this big rejection. We're like, well, that's it. That was the one opportunity. But the universe totally. is like, oh, you've run out of all your opportunities, you know, except for our president. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, but Dana, thank you so much. No for sharing, thank you so much for sharing your, your two title show and, and Millie uh, memories. Before we get to Leslie's memory, uh, we're going to take a brief break to go to our good news segment. Um, so each show, we like to highlight an organization or cause that is doing good in the world. Yes. And after the past day or two, uh, we really need to hear some good news. So um, for this week, we are happy to welcome Mara Jill Herman from Ahava Theatre Company. Mara, like marathon. Happy yeah. New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Same. So let's get to some good news. Please right. tell us about Ahava Theater Company. I became affiliated with them last year. Elissa Nicole Trust is the founder, and she reached out to me because she knew I had a background in arts education. And Ahava Theater Company is devoted to telling Jewish stories. We're both proud Jewish women, and we really wanted to create a space that breaks the status quo and focuses on Jewish stories. And uh, she asked me to join so I could help her develop the educational branch of this company. Our first big project was uh, from last December, we decided to create a Hanukkah themed video. So we collaborated with Jesse Nager of the Broadway Boys. They, uh, recorded a beautiful rendition of The Lights, also known as Hanukkah, Hanukkah. We asked 13 families to share their Hanukkah experience with us. And so we edited uh, together a video trailer and that's up on our website now. Uh, now that it's the new year, we are in fact building virtual content. So there will be educational programming for children and adults alike coming soon. So why is Ahava Theater Company important right now in this time? Thanks for asking that. You know, a couple years ago, I recognized that there was increasing anti-Semitism in the U.S., specifically under our previous administration. So the more we can do to remind the country and the world that Jews have a voice and, you know, fight for a more peaceful existence. You uh, worked on Hello Gorgeous, Funny Folks in Concert, and this was a digital concert that raised awareness and funds for uh, the International Sanctuary, which is a nonprofit organization that empowers girls and women escaping human trafficking across the globe. The Hello Gorgeous concert was uh, dedicated to Fanny Bryce and her legacy and celebrating Jewish artists, Jewish icons, and 60 artists participated in this concert. So it was a real feat. We do have a mailing list. So if you are a learner or a student or someone who's raising a young Jewish mind, uh, we would love for you to join our mailing list so you can stay aware of the upcoming programming. But I should say that we are also open and welcoming folks from all walks of life. So you don't have to be a Jewish person to participate in our programming. Everyone, please get involved. Thank you for joining us. Yay, thanks, Mara. And Bye. cut. Yay, thank you, Mara. And remember to visit ahavatheater.com for more information on how to get involved and support.
And if you're part of an organization that's doing good in the world and want us to feature it on My Broadway Memory, please email us at mybroadwaymemory at gmail.com. Yay! And please email us with your Broadway memories as well. And let's get you on the show. It's a lot of fun. This is a community-based show. <laughs> community-based. Okay, Kritzer. Hi. You're up. Okay, so... <laughs> Now, listen, I watched Beth Level's episode and she did <laughs> memorabilia, but I yeah. have both in my, I'm going to do one memorabilia thing from a show that I did. And then I'm going to do one memory. Now I have a couple of amazing memories. I don't have a playbill from one of these things, but um, I'm going to have to pick one and they're really, really hard, but I'm, I'll pick, I'll pick this one. Okay. Go with your gut. So I'm going to go with my gut. Wait, there's two. I have to think about it. <laughs> Okay, this is really hard. They're both really, really good. All right. Um, so I love Olympia Dukakis. And back in the day, I'm older. She did a play on Broadway called Rose. And it was a one-person show. And she sat on a bench the entire show. I'm, by the way, I'm so shocked that I haven't F-bombed this entire time. <laughs> and it's because of the incredible email that you guys sent out about really trying to like keep it clean. And I have to say, like, I like myself better. So I, I, I have an F on one. I'm like, I want to do it, but I, I haven't. Okay. Yes. So, wow. What time is it? I feel crazy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel it's one in the morning. Like that third coffee really just hit. Okay. So, so she was doing this play called Rose. Okay. This amazing play. Don't ask me what the, who the author is. Very famous. Can't remember. But she sits on a bench this entire time and it's just her. And so I bought a ticket, probably a TKTS, and I went by myself and I'm sitting there and like, his, like crying. She's so brilliant. She's so amazing. She barely does anything. And she literally just tells a story for an hour, hour and a half on this bench. And so I waited outside um, and I, I think she came out like my brain is fuzzy about it, but I think she came out to sign playbills or maybe I was a little nervous and I didn't go up for her to sign it. But I wrote her a letter. And she used to have a theater company in Montclair, New Jersey. Um, and, you know, she was very active there in the, the, this theater that she started. And then she it dismantled or whatever. But I wrote her a letter and I asked her, I said, if, you know, I'm such a fan of yours. I think you're so amazing. You know, obviously I saw her in Moonstruck and whatever. I was like, um, and, and, and I was living in Hoboken at the time. I remember this. And... And I, and I wrote her this card and I said, I just think you're amazing. I want you to know, like I idolize you. And because she's like a character actress and I love real character actresses. And um, if there's any way that I could learn from you or if you ever teach, I would, I would, you know, do anything for anything to be a student. She wrote me back. Okay. Wish I could find, I kept it. I kept the card for so long and now I can't find it. You'll find uh, it. You'll find she it. wrote me back a beautiful card saying, I got your note. And I just want to say, like, keep studying, keep, um, keep, you know, your passion. I, I am not teaching right now. I haven't taught in a long time, but uh, just know that your letter meant so much to me. And I can tell mm -hmm. that you really want to do this with your life. And this is when I was just starting out. So because if you look up when Rose was on Broadway, it was a really it was a long time ago. It was probably like in the early maybe 2099, I, I think like that. And um, that's meant so much to me that she took the time to write me back, which is why when I, and it just really, and I was like, wow, this famous person wrote me a card back, like put a stamp on an envelope and wrote me back. So now when I get um, fan mail or when I get stuff, I, I, I always write people back. I always send things back. I started a PO box after we closed uh, Beetlejuice because we used to get all this fan mail and, um, and, and I really enjoyed answering, um, most of it, except the questionnaires. Those were really long, but, um, the questionnaires, I was like, whoo girl, sometimes I would just Instagram them and be like, my favorite part of the show is, um, when I started this PO box, cause I remember what that felt like, you know, I remember what it felt like to like get a letter from someone like that. So, um, yeah, that was that was like a real important Broadway memory. For I me. love that. I love that. Dukakis. Okay, and that's such a full circle moment, right? Like that. Now you're the person inspiring people. Yes. You know, and oh, I met her. That. I did meet her uh, two years ago on the street with her um, late husband, now late husband, 
uh, coming out of seeing a show at New York Theater Workshop. Um, I didn't say to her that I wrote, I wrote to her years and years ago, but I, it was nice just to see her all these years later and have that little secret, you know, to remembering in the back of my mind that, oh yeah. That's, that's a good acting technique. When you go on stage, have your character have a secret. Oh, it's, wait, isn't that funny? Oh, every acting coach. So what's her secret? Just have her have a secret. <laughs> Olympia Dukakis. <laughs> <laughs> Olympia Dukakis. <laughs> um, okay. My next one is really good. Okay. You guys, I dug this out of the bowels of my closet. I okay. can't wait. Now, in two, 2007, I was in a show. I'm bringing up some photo reference, which I will put in the show. In a little show <laughs> called A Catered Affair on Broadway. I'm sure people have seen pictures of Faith Prince and myself. Yes. So this this okay. wedding dress. Um, okay. <laughs> Someone just made a post on Instagram. Um, <laughs> you still have your notifications like, on just, Instagram. Yeah, just my notifications. So for the youngins that don't know what Catered Affair is, because it wasn't like a Legally Bond show. It was a small show. Harvey Firestein, myself, Faith Prince. Um, it was on Broadway for a short period of time. I did it right after I did Legally Blonde. I actually left Legally Blonde right after the Tony Awards to start rehearsal for this show, which is like one of my favorite shows that I've ever done. Um you know, it was, it was just magic. Anyway, cut to when I, when I was growing up, I idolized Faith Prince. I listened to Guys and Dolls uh, with her and Nathan Lane over and over and over and over again. I found out that she went to Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. Long story short, I was like, I'm going to go to school there. I did go to school there. I met her. She signed my Guys and Dolls playbill. Just so you know, full circle, then she played my mother. Oh, that's my screen. <laughs> She played my mom. I'm I love that. That's but that's not my Broadway memory. My Broadway memory is so. Oh my god! I'm so. so I'm so, on the edge of my seat right now. I can't I wait. <laughs> what is Leslie's secret? So that wedding dress, by the way, was you know custom made, beautiful. It was like unbelievable. So my favorite, my Broadway memory, and this is a funny Broadway memory. My Broadway okay. memory. <laughs> so I was auditioning for the revival of West Side Story, which was in 2000, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know. And I was doing this show with Matt Cavanaugh, who was auditioning for Tony. And I was auditioning for Maria. I looked really good. I could sing soprano. I was like, I'm going to be Maria. I'm like, I know it. I know it. So um, long story short, blah, blah, blah. I didn't get it. And I was so sad. I knew Matt was going to get it. I, I like had. Michael, I had psychic energy with that. I was like, Matt, you're getting it. And he's like, I don't know. I was like, I know you're going to get it. He got it. I didn't. Fine, whatever. I was so sad. I was so sad. I was so depressed. I went to Amy's Bread on Ninth Avenue. Okay. I told the people behind the counter. I was like, yeah, I'm getting to get some, um, some cookies for, yeah, for friends. So I need... Um, one of those and one of those and that cinnamon bread cola wrap thing. And this and this. I went to my dressing room, cried in my bathrobe. This is between shows. This is between shows. <laughs> Ate like four cookies on like a on like a cinnamon roll, like a like and a ridiculous amount. Okay. Meanwhile, this dress is not forgiving. Okay, you see that little that weight situation? That's not nice. Okay. And then so I have to be on stage in that. All right. Now. I have the veil. <laughs> the original veil. Look at this. Look that's... how long that is. It's a train. It's so okay. Oh my I have... God. No, I wore that on television too. That was like the, on the Tony Awards I danced. I so, remember, yeah. But, but I'm going to put this on so I can tell the rest of the story. So um, <laughs> it's so long, you guys. It is, it is literally. It is like <laughs> this Princess Diana S. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it's yes. Okay, so we get to this part of the show. Now, already I was bloated, right? And <laughs> okay, this is, okay. I was already bloated and I was sad. My first three costumes, barely the zipper went up. My dresser's like, what's going on? I was like, nothing, I'm fine. <laughs> I had pockets in one of those dresses that I keep pretzels in sometimes when I was hungry. <laughs> True story. Now, I'm just going to say, I wasn't planning on wearing this, but this is just too fun. I love it. So, so we get to the part where I have the quick change in this dress. 
Okay. I'm in the wings. They're they're trying to zip the dress. They couldn't zip the dress. <laughs> they couldn't zip <laughs> the dress. So I had to walk out there okay, <laughs> and stand on this chair with the back of my dress completely <laughs> open. And Faye Prince is looking at me like this, seeing the zipper, the zipper open on the back of the dress, as does Christine Biz uh, Zbornik, who's back there, and she's dying. She's like, oh my God, I don't even have this on yet, this thing, okay? And then I have to go th like this, and I have to do a 360 in oh, the back. No. That's part of the choreography, okay? And I had to go like that. I had to leave the stage. I was supposed to like go like, you know, walk off. And I left the stage like this. Oh. Yes. <laughs> did you tip off the stage? Like a, like a show? I did, like a, like a sock. You guys, seriously, I should auction this. Like, I'm never gonna wear that. Um, for charity, I should like give that to charity. For, for Broadway Cares. It, I'm actually crying from that's laughing. That's very funny. I mean, skin all the way. Okay, wait, wait, wait. It, and then I'll just tell the rest, of, like at the end. I was so mortified. Then I had to walk back on stage, put that on and dance with Matt. And I told him, I said, we can't turn around. <laughs> back of my dress. They could not let my dresser, Lolly at the time was like, what, what should I do? I was like, Lolly, there's nothing to do. It's not going to sit. Okay. Rest of the show, did the show, did the show. Wound up in the bathroom. Okay. In the bathroom, doubled over in pain. You guys, I ate so much. Like it was like a problem. Like I should have gone to rehab for food problem right there. Like it was, it was like tears. Like what did I do? Donna Murphy, who now I'm like friendly with, comes to the show and she wants to see me. I told them, don't tell her where I am. I've never told her that story. She came back. So said, I want to see Leslie. I want to say hi. I told my dresser. I said, tell her I left. I hid. In the bathroom, in the wardrobe room, the basement of the Walter Kerr from <laughs> Donna Murphy until everybody left. I'm talking like the only person that was left was a doorman. I, I hid in the bathroom the entire night. I probably, well, I don't know what happened in there, but I, I literally left and no one was outside. It was like me. I actually called a friend. I was like, you have to go get me. Um, but yeah, that's my Broadway memory. My And I should probably, this should be a new segment for you guys called Broadway Low Point. Um, <laughs> that's my Broadway memory. That's that's my Broadway memory. Funny. It takes a lot for me to like. You f bombed. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Kushner. But it's your show. That's funny. It takes Back a lot for me to actually laugh, and that made me laugh. I mean, when I tell you, Faith Prince's face was like. It's an emotional. You guys, this is like. This is a an emo this is a major part of the show where the daughter finally gets in the wedding dress at the wedding shop. I had to sing um my white dress, whatever the uh, hell the song was, like looking, I never think that I'm beautiful. Like like this beautiful scene. <laughs> and I am stuffed full of Amy's bread with the back of my dress white <laughs> with my ass out. This is a great plug for Amy's bread, I think. Yeah. This is all of us after quarantine going to our first costume. That's not trying to lie though to the bakery. Like, I'm, why am I even trying to lie? It's none of their business what I'm doing, but why I'm, I'm explaining. I'm like, it's not just me. It's for my friends. No, I didn't offer it to anybody. Nothing. No one. Very funny. Oh my gosh. I oh, am dead. obsessed with that. Yep. There we go. I knocked the wind out of me. That's incredible. It's a um, and also everyone in the comments is literally like dying as well. Like Should that's, I, yeah, it's, it's true. We, we can listen, we, we can, we, we can listen to you tell stories for years and I love it. And um, I really hate to say this, but it, we, we have to wrap up. I don't want to. I know. Oh. I don't want to. So um, I mean, most of the people hey, here. Are, I talked are, for a long time. Oh my God. No, you, you both, you it both. great. Talked. You both were wonderful. I mean, mo and most everyone here is already following you on social media, but just a quick plug. Where can we find you just in case someone watching is not? Just on the Instagram. I don't really. Uh, yeah. Instagram, right? Dana and I are always on yeah. the Instagram. We're on the Instagram thing. We're hip. We're cool. 
super hip. Yeah. We're cool. We don't know what we're doing, but we're trying. No, we're trying. Yeah. I haven't done a reel. I don't know if I want no. to do a reel. It's too much. It's we a lot. We're not on TikTok. We just started TikTok, oh, and it's, it's 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 a venture. It's a world. I want someone to pay me. I know. I joined. I joined, but I've not made a video. It's stressful. Yeah. It's very it's stressful. Also, <laughs> the algorithm is very strange. The algorithm is weird. We have random vi vi videos that go viral for like no reason, but I'm like, I'm going to post this video and then that gets like 200 views. And it's like, I thought that one was, it's the weird, it, it's stressful. It's stressful. But you know what? What I always say to you is if you're putting it out in the world, putting something out that you want to do, um, it's like, go ahead and like, it's awesome. Everybody's doing their own thing, whether they're yeah, teaching yes. or posting, but yeah, yeah. my God, I can't, I can't, the TikTok, the TikTok is like, I know I could do it if I applied myself. I'm just not. Right. And that's okay. And that's okay. Cause we love you both for who you we love are. You. <laughs> Our next show yeah. is two weeks from tonight, January 21st at 7 PM with special guests. Anne Harada and Ali Ewo. Oh my goodness. Oh, hey. yes. Right here on Broadway Podcast Network. I cannot wait for that. And please remember, friends, to follow My Broadway Memory on social media for more updates uh, at My Broadway Memory. And you can also follow me at Remy Germanario and Michael at the Michael Kushner. Yes, please do really follow us on social media because it just helps. <laughs> like it just does. You know, it really does. And we also it like, oh, we really post fun stuff and like never before seen things and also like ways that you can get involved. So like, why not follow us and like yeah. figure out those opportunities? So before we go, let's take a group picture. And I think the group picture is going to be us saying, Lolly, there's nothing to do. So <laughs> I want, I want, I want us to literally just like Lolly. have absolute despair and it's just right to Lolly. Okay. Okay. Three. Two, one. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to text her yeah. and tell her I told this story. I love that. And, and we'll, when, uh, we'll send you the picture and you can send it to that She's picture. She's also so thin. She would never eat like five cookies. She probably looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> lolly. Lolly, lolly, lolly. lolly. Best best here, best okay? best right. I'm obsessed with that. Well, Wait, and shout out to dressers for those of you that are watching. Lifesavers. Lifesavers and amazing. The best. We really. miss you. We miss you. We miss you. Yeah. We uh, miss everyone backstage. Not just really our cat. Do. Every single person. We really it do. Is a whole machine. Seriously. The Broadway theater community. There's so, True. so much going on behind the scenes. This was... Yeah. Uh, such an incredible episode. I'm literally so sad to go. So many great funny stories. So many great... <gasps> I stayed up all night. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I've been up for two days. <laughs> One more coffee. Hairspray. Like oh, <laughs> just backwards. Leslie, I'm really Best thing I've ever seen. What was it? Oh, oh that was so. Oh, good. I didn't see that. I was. You guys, I love this so much. I kept the ticket. I mean, I never do that. <laughs> um. Also, wait. I will say, uh, Alan, our producer, really wants to. I, I mean, I do too. But can we show the Julie photo that we were talking about before? There we go. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> She's literally perfect. Um, yeah, Alan, our producer of the show, is was he's literally such an amazing artist and cheerleader. And when I got that text from him, it was like he made my fecocted dreams come true. So that was yes, one of the best Alan. days of my Isn't life. Alan, the you're the best producer, and um, and we thank you. Yes, and thank you to Leslie, Dana, our weather girl, Christina yes, Bianco. Christina. Ara Jill Herman, Ahava Theater, co-creator Brian Sedita, Josh Freilich, who composed our uh, uh, opening, and Laura Bonacci, who does our graphics. Yes, we'd also like to thank everyone at Broadway Podcast Network, Alan, Dory, Britt, Katie, Stan, all the ama amazing engineers. You're incredible. Yeah. Can Bye. we all, <laughs> let's all exit like oh. Leslie walking off stage with let's the wedding. Okay. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.